you fought for this whole world for love. That is who you are. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the most heartbreaking things that happened to Dean on Supernatural. Will someone just give this man a hug already? Ex-lady friend and not kid. And I'm keeping them until I'm satisfied. Number 10, when he was slowly losing his memory. Memory loss is a common storyline in dramas for a reason. It's horribly sad. Dean. Dean. Who's Dean? Combine this with Jensen Ackles' raw acting talent, and now we're all staring at the screen looking like the face holding back tears emoji. My name is Dean Winchester. Same as my brother. Uh, Mary Winchester is my mom. And Cass, Cass is my best friend. Dean begins the episode not remembering the last night or knowing how he woke up in the woods. Things only get worse from there. He can't remember the case they're working on, people he should recognize, or even how to drive. It's all the product of a hex from a witch, and it is quickly taking its toll. You know, I've seen my brother die, but watching him become not him, this might actually be worse. Eventually, Dean ends up in front of the mirror, repeating his own name and those of the people he loves, and then, just like that, those are gone too. But my name is, is Number 9. When He Went to Purgatory When Hell and Heaven were feeling a little been there done that, the next logical place to pay a visit to was obviously Purgatory. Dean and Cass get transported after killing Head Chief Leviathan, Dick Roman. And where would he go in death? What are you telling me? Every soul here is a monster. This is where they come to prey upon each other for all eternity. Even the worst classes feel endurable with a friend by your side, but unfortunately, Dean and Cass get separated, and Dean spends a whole year trying to track him down. Yes, I think we better. Cass! After fighting for your survival nearly every moment and for such a long time, it's a miracle Dean is as level-headed as he is when he's reunited with the Angel, who, it's revealed, took off in order to protect him. You ran away. I had to. That's your excuse for leaving me with those gorilla wolves. Dean. You bailed out in what? We camping? I prayed to you, Cass, every night. All that and they still don't return home together. Number 8. When Bobby Died No, we're not gonna have that conversation. Oh, we need to. He's not gonna die. He might. Sam? Dean, listen. We need to brace ourselves. Why? Because it's real. Of course, this was a moment that gutted both brothers, but there's something to be said about the father role Bobby played to Dean more than he did to Sam. Sam always had his older brother to look to for advice and support, but Dean's older mentor figure was always Bobby. Listen to me, I'm gonna say this once. He's not gonna die. It's one bullet. He's gonna be fine because he's always fine. We'd had a few Bobby scares prior to season seven's death's door, but the longer the episode went on, the more nervous we got. The sheer panic Sam and Dean erupt into after he's first injured is not felt by them alone. We'll say that much. Talk to me, Sam! All right, he's breathing. There's a bullet. Keep him upright. Stop the bleeding. I'm not an idiot, Dean. I know first aid for a freaking bullet to the head. Here's Trumpson. Hold on. Hold on. What's the address? My Bobby hanging there. Bobby's still hovering around for a few episodes afterward, because no one in Supernatural is truly gone. But the grief the brothers endure is completely palpable. Dean, do you want to call Bobby's people or not? What, why, is, why is that our job? Because who else is going to do it? I'm not calling anybody. Number 7. When he bore the mark of Cain. First time I touched that blade, I knew. The Mark of Cain, also known as the First Curse, has corrupted many more powerful than Dean. The poor guy never stood a chance. But options aren't exactly plentiful when it comes to ridding Hell of Abaddon, a knight who's given Crowley the boot. After Dean manages to kill her with the first blade, it's obvious something more is going on with him. He becomes straight-up bloodthirsty. Drop the blade, Dean! Move! Dean! Sam! Move! Dean. 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 
and let it go. This doesn't last for too long since he's eventually killed by Metatron, but wouldn't you know it, the Mark brings him back to life with one teensy contingency. Let's go take a howl at that moon. Can this man catch his breath for one damn second, please? Number six, Sam's sacrifice. The only thing that you're gonna see out there is Michael killing your brother. Well, then I ain't gonna let him die alone. Season five's ending is one of the most difficult to digest, and the lead up to get there is no picnic either. You're not hungry, Dean, because inside you're already dead. Dean and Sam learn they're meant to be used as vessels for a fight between Michael and Lucifer. They've pretty much started the apocalypse, and there are few moves left to make. During the fated confrontation, Castiel and Bobby are killed, and Dean is badly battered. Like, we can't believe he survived at all badly battered. If that didn't make us want to put a blanket over him and bring him a cup of tea, the aftermath certainly did. Dean falls into despondency without his brother. Every part of him, every fiber he's got, wants to die or find a way to bring Sam back. He fulfills his promise of moving on, but it's obvious he's a shell of who he once was. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Number five, when he died, for good this time. Um, all right, I'll call for help. I'll get the first aid kit. Sam, Sam, Sam. Stay, stay with me. Can you stay with me, please? It's not so much the dying part that gets us here. After all, we've seen Dean die countless times by this point. Plus, death finally afforded the elder brother the peace we'd wanted for him since the very beginning of the show. Just him, baby, and the open road for that little while. That's not a bad afterlife. While his death certainly hurt Sam, and us, more than him, what always gets us is his goodbye speech. It's okay. Think at me. Look at me. I need, I need, I need you to tell me that it's okay. After everything the brothers have been through together, how could a piece of rebar be the thing that does him in? And I didn't know what I would have done if I didn't. Because I was, I was scared. I was scared. Because when it all came down to it, it was always you and me. Dean deserved to enjoy victory, and life on Earth with his brother just a little longer. Number four, after Mary died. Take your brother outside as fast as you can. Don't look back. Now, Dean, go! <laughs> This is the event that pretty much kicked off Dean's trajectory of hardship and tragedy. Not only did he have to mourn his mom at such a young age, his dad was never the same either. What happened? I just went out. What? Just for a second. I'm sorry. I told you not to leave this room. I told you not to let him out of your sight. Few versions of Dean deserve a bigger hug than his kid self, who was overcome with grief and forced to grow up too fast. The severe toll this all took on him is no clearer than the pure awe on his face when Mary's brought back in season 11. The only thing worse than losing her once is losing her a second time. Mom. Mom. Number three, when he lost Castiel. As with many of the supernatural characters, Castiel has died plenty of times. I guess. Whenever Dean is around to witness it, the clear horror he expresses never fails to tug at our heartstrings. The season 12 finale stands out for a few reasons. Not only were we lured into a false sense of security before they ripped the Band-Aid off, but Dean and Sam would lose their mom to the portal that night, too. And then there's everybody's favorite moment in season 15. After Cass tells Dean he loves him, the empty claims his life. Don't do this, Cass. Where we usually see Dean on edge and livid after Cass is gone, this time he just looks really broken. Number two, hell. 
Seeing Dean get ripped into hell by hellhounds is a moment from our first watch through of the show that we'll just never forget. Hellhound. We were desperately hoping the boys would have found a way out before Dean's time was up. But then it cuts to him suspended by chains, and we've never felt our hearts sink faster. Living through the entire ordeal is one thing, but coming back to the living world and remembering those years of torture is a whole other level of pain. And I got off that wreck. God help me, I got right off it. And I started ripping them apart. Coupled with Jensen Ackles' performance here, we turn into a puddle every time we watch this scene. No one deserves to have this kind of weight and trauma on their conscience, but especially not Dean. I wish I couldn't feel anything, Sammy. I wish I couldn't feel a damn thing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. When He Lost Sam Dean's primary motive has always been one thing and one thing only, protecting his little brother. Look at me, it's not even that bad. It's not even that bad, right? Sammy? Sam! Hey, listen to me, we're gonna patch you up, okay? You be good as new, huh? I'm gonna take care of you, I'm gonna take care of you. We can almost commiserate with him when he's so distraught that he refuses to bury Sam's body and sells his soul to get him back. This wouldn't be the only time he went to extreme lengths to save Sam, but it's the one that feels the most dire. These two are constantly sacrificing for one another, but it always feels worse when Dean's the one to lose his brother. It's like I had one job. I had one job. And I screwed it up. Not only does he have to deal with the grief, but also the heavy burden of failure to protect the one person he always swore he would. I had to look out for you. That's my job. And what do you think my job is? What? You saved my life over and over. I mean, you sacrifice everything for me. Don't you think I do the same for you? Which moment warranted the biggest hug? Let us know in the comments. agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.